Bitcoin has seen an impressive move to $46,000. Will Bitcoin continue through this major high time frame level of resistance? Or is this short term move nothing more than a bull trap? Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin on the monthly, the weekly, the daily, and the short-term charts, discussing the recent rally from 44.2k up to 45,000. We're going to be discussing that major high time frame resistance at 46 to 48k, whether or not this move has the strength to push Bitcoin through that resistance, or if this short-term rally is going to come to an end and result in a correction. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical, and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you're interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the third link down below. You'll get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and the relevant economic news. If you are interested in taking your trading to the next level, join us in VIP. We post trading setups with exact entries, guys, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, exclusive analysis, and you'll even get access to group chats, our general chat, our trading chart and education chat, our trade setup chat, our daily video, trading, news, and of course, our help chat. If you're interested in getting access to all of that, go ahead and contact us in the pinned comment of the free channel. You can also find our entire trading track record since February 2021. Let's go ahead, guys, and dive into the video. So like we said, Bitcoin has seen a pretty impressive last 24 hours. Before we get into the market data and to start our video, as we usually do, a quick discussion of what has actually occurred. So Bitcoin saw a decent break up through that 44 0.25k level and in yesterday's video we told you guys a four hour close above this horizontal level of resistance would result in a move to a 45.5 to $46,000 region. Why did we say that? Well, if we look back at the past, we can see we're seeing many large wicks above this horizontal resistance. And we noted that every single time we closed that four hour candle above, we actually saw a rally to at least 45.5 to 46,000. So we told you guys this this video, a break on the four hour, a close above that level, which we did get, would result in a continuation of this move up to 45.5 to 46. So if you caught that move, congratulations guys. Let's go ahead and start off on that market data. So moving on to market data, we can see 24 hour volume is sitting at a total of 93 billion. This is up 8.68% in the last 24 hours. So not really all that much change. 24 hour liquidations are sitting at a total of 97 million down 5.94% in the last 24 hours. Again, not that much of a change. Of the 97 million, 33 million have come from longs, which is very surprising because the price action has just pretty much gone only up. But again, a lot of people were trading 125X leverage, very tight stop losses. Short, 64 million more acceptable over there on that short side. Moving over to the DXY guys, we can take a look at this and have a look. We can see the DXY is still ranging between this upper level of resistance and lower level of support. We do have our current uptrending support line as represented by this diagonal trend line. This is still intact representing the overall uptrend the DXY has been in ever since the start of 2024. A breakdown of this level should result in a correction back to our base of support at 103. 103 is a key level of support that it needs to hold above realistically to remain semi bullish. If we do break below this level, we are looking for a higher time frame correction all the way back down to this 101 to 100 zone. Until then, we are in an overall uptrend, so the trend could definitely continue upwards. We are looking for a move to 105 to 105.5. Again, a lot of the directional move that does in a follow from this date is going to be based on the upcoming inflation data on the 13th, which is in four days time. So keep your eyes on that one. Moving over to the S&P 500, not too much change from yesterday. We are still breaking over that major $5,000 level. If you do look at the time over here, 
weekend. So we have 22 hours remaining on that weekly candle close. So this will be the highest weekly candle close the S&P 500 has ever seen if we do close this weekly candle above. And again, it will be flipping this level into a short-term psychological level of support, which is about $5,000 level turning to support upon that weekly candle close. Definitely something we are watching out for. If we do break and close a weekly candle underneath that 5,000 level, it will validate this level as an area of resistance and we could see a short-term downtrend to continue. Any directional move toward the upside, we are looking for whole numbers, 5,100, 5,200, et cetera, et cetera. Moving over to the uh, Dow Jones over here, we can see we are still expecting a move to that $39,000 level. Again, guys, this is going to be that initial psychological level of resistance above there, 40,000. At the moment, we are still looking very strong. We are looking for a retest or at least an initial test of this area of resistance. A break below the range low at 37,600 will result in a correction as this area will be marked as deviation. Enough exhaustion will have developed to the point at which the price is entering a weekly downtrend. So we're looking for a downtrend below that level. Until then, we are above this area of support and thus we are in an overall uptrend aiming for that next level of resistance. So all looks pretty healthy right now on the higher time frame. Watch how those daily charts develop. Let's go ahead and jump over to Bitcoin. But before we do, a quick word from BitGet and BingX. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel, BitGet and BingX. So which exchange should you sign up to? If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you're going to see the list of differences in relation to KYC requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to. The first link down below being the BitGet link and the second link down below being the BingX link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to $5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for their users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. Okay team, that is enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump over to Bitcoin. And as we've said, there is a quite a bit to discuss today as Bitcoin has had a decent move toward the upside. This move is around a five-ish percent move toward the upside. And a lot of people were really expecting Bitcoin to come down to 32,000. A lot of people were expecting Bitcoin to come down to 35,000. And those predictions were coming as Bitcoin was correcting from that 49,000, 48,000 high down to around 39 to 38,000. We actually posted guys a few times, specifically over on Telegram. Like we saw, we do all of our updates on Telegram over here. We told you guys at this point over here in Telegram, just like all other times, the majority are always wrong and the bias are always late. Expect the bottom of this move to be much higher, okay, than most are expecting. We post this one back on the 23rd of January, because the 23rd of January was this date right over here, 11 p.m. our time, right at the bottom. When we start to see directional moves, strong directional moves moving into areas of support on the higher time frame, particularly if that is a large move, high time frame indicators are lagging. A lot of new traders, a lot of analysts out there don't understand the concept of lagging indicators and how to actually review these in regards to different time frames on a contextual basis. So they see one thing and they assume that is the market, that is where it's going. So generally we see after these aggressive reversals like we have seen here, a lot of people are only starting to flip bullish nearing the end of the move, if not the end of the move. So you're going to see a lot of people are generally late to these moves or they flip their biases at the moment of which the trend starts reversing. That is going to be the same instance here. The reason I'm telling you this is because as we start approaching areas of resistance after a move up, it is not time to get more bullish. It is time to start thinking about potential opportunities to take profits on your position and flip your positions to hedge against downside risk as the probabilities of a, reje a rejection, sorry, after we hit resistances increase than a probability of a continuation before we break that level of resistance. So we'll come back to the short term, but I want to kind of branch into a high time frame from that topic 
And that brings us to this chart over here. This is going to be our three day, or you could call this a weekly chart over here for Bitcoin. This is probably the most important chart we are watching on the higher time frame, And really actually I would say is the most important chart for Bitcoin. It outlines the key trigger points for both the continuation on the macro and a move into a downtrend. So let's take a look at this chart over here. We've got our 46 to 48K resistance. This is the level we actually retested last night, right? On that rally upwards, we've retested that lower range of this resistance. The 46 to 48K level of major macro resistance. You can see a break of this level will result in a macro continuation upwards. How do we break this level? Well, we need to see a monthly candle close above 48,000. So let's take this point and move over to our monthly chart. If we see on the monthly chart, we have got our 48,000 level marked down by that dotted trend line. We have seen in the past, every single time we close a monthly candle above the dotted trend line, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and circle it, uh, actually mark it out with a red box. So every single time we see a monthly candle close above that dotted trend line, that is when the bull run officially starts. Now you're wondering, how can you say that? Well, two things occur at that point. Number one, we see the trend angle significantly increase from that point onwards, and we see the Harvey event has already occurred. So generally, we see upon that monthly candle close, the trend angle from that monthly candle close to the peak of the all-time high is significantly greater than the bear market low to that point of the breakout. You can see a 39 degree trend angle to a 67 degree trend angle. We can do it again over here. You can see, okay, a 36 degree trend angle increasing to a 63% trend angle. The trend angle is a representation, okay, of the strength of a high time frame trend. The higher the angle, the stronger and more aggressive the trend. When we see a high time frame directional move over many, many months that is representative of immense strength in comparison to prior sections of price action, that's the most important thing. In comparison to prior section of price action, it represents, in this instance, a bull run. So that is generally what we see when we see a bull run. So we're going to say a monthly candle close of 48,000 is going to trigger the bull run to officially start for Bitcoin. And that is not me saying, oh, I've been bearish. No, I'm not going to let people twist my words. I've been bullish from 19,000. I flipped bearish on this candle publicly. One of the first people to do so. I told you guys, dead cap bounce high fake out. We flipped bullish all the way down over here and we've been absolutely bullish ever since. But we're telling you, for us to see a traditional bull run start to start, okay, we need to see a monthly close above 48,000. A monthly close above 48,000 will take us to an initial point of resistance at 52,000. And then following that, we should move to that prior all-time high. This is not me hyping up the chart. This is what we are seeing based on our volume ranges, based on the structural levels. If we move over to that weekly chart, we can see according to the four year cycle, we are in the third year of the third cycle. Okay, year three of the third cycle. During year three of the third cycle or during year three of any cycle, should I say, we do two things. We break a monthly candle above that dollar trend line, in this instance is 48k, and we retest the all-time high from the last cycle. That tells us during this year we should break 48,000 on a monthly, and we should retest the all-time high from last cycle, which is that $70,000, $69,000 area. That is what it is saying. So let's go back to this chart and now kind of bring us back to reality. We've got the high time frame targets. We've talked about what actually needs to happen for that continuation. Now we need to address a very important topic, which is what we talked about at the start. As we approach resistance, people start to get mega bullish, okay? And we have to understand resistance is resistance until it is not, okay? Resistance is resistance until it is not. We also have to understand support is support until it is not. That means we are stuck between a rock and a hard place. We are stuck between, okay, a major area of support at 38,000 and a major area of resistance at 40,000 with our range lows and highs represented by the upper and lower levels of support and resistance of those high time frame support ranges sitting at 40,000 and 46,000. You can see the price action is bouncing between these two levels 
And when we break either the lower range of that level or the upper range of the level, we see a large move into or to below the lower range or upper range of that respective support and resistance. So if we are looking for a high time frame continuation downwards to 35,000 to 32,000, we absolutely have to at least look for a break below 40,000 before that even becomes a logical, I would say, a uh, equally possible scenario, okay? Right now we are neutral, an equally possible scenario. To say we are, gr we are going to see 35,000, to say we are going to see 32,000, is to completely ignore the high time frame support and current strength of a trend that we've developed over the last few months. It is if we lose those levels, then these lower targets become possible and I'll be the first person to be shorting the market if that does occur on the short time frame. okay? If we zoom out, the high time frame uptrend remains above 32,000. This is going to be in confluence with that green uptrending line, meaning even if we do see a correction down, which I personally believe is a little bit unlikely below 38,000 as of right now, the macro uptrend remains bullish. If we zoom out to the monthly chart again, guys, we can show you on the monthly scale, right over here, every single time we close a monthly candle above the monthly resistance, okay? The monthly resistance of the high time frame chart after the bear market bottom, we do never see a monthly candle close below that level again. That in this instance is going to be 32,000. In prior instances, it is reflected by that black trend line. We never saw a monthly candle close. Even during the COVID crash, we did not close a monthly below it. So that tells us if we were to close a monthly below 32,000, we would see the four year cycle break and we would see us enter a new macro downtrend. How low can we go? Not gonna speculate, we'll discuss that if it ever occurs, okay? Something to keep in mind. So that is the monthly chart, guys. That is the weekly chart. At the moment, we are approaching an area of resistance, okay? The high time frame is bullish. You have to be aware. The high time frame is bullish. On the short time frame, we are approaching resistance. So you have to weigh out how you are going to play that, whether you have long-term positions you are holding, and then short term, you are starting to flip short on the short term, taking profits on those longs, whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and talk about the short term price action right now, guys, as it is incredibly relevant in regards to where the price action is going to go. What determines where the price action goes over here? Okay, obviously we have main drivers of price action, okay? The buyers and sellers behind the price action. But if we're looking for triggers specifically from a technical basis or a structural basis, we have to look at the short-term chart to actually identify what is more likely. So let's go ahead and do that now. If we take a look at the short-term, we'll start on the bearish case scenario and it's the easiest scenario to describe. Like we've said already, the 38 to 40K level is going to be the range low of support on the higher time frame. This area over here, like we've said, for us to flip into a downtrend officially on the higher time frame chart, okay, we're talking about a high time frame downtrend, not a short term downtrend. We were in a short term downtrend upon the retest of 40k. If you remember on our channel, we were telling you guys, ever since all the way down over here, if we close a monthly about 32,000, we will see a retest of 40k and we will reject from 48K, okay? You can go back and watch the videos. We were in a short-term downtrend from that 48K level. We found support at 38. We flipped the downtrend. We have been in a uptrend ever since, okay? So we're in a short-term uptrend within this higher time frame consolidation. So for the weekly trend to turn bearish, Bitcoin will need to break below, okay? $38,000. A loss of $38,000 turns a weekly trend bearish. That is when I start to expect my old coins to drop 30%. Okay, that is when I expect old coins to start getting wrecked. Okay, that is when I expect larger corrections on the market if that occurs. If we lose $40,000, that is going to be very bearish as it would indicate a retest of 38 k is coming. Now, 38 k is still support, so even if we do get the retest, it could be a potential area where bounces could develop. Okay. If we break this up trending diagonal support line, we have listed, and again, it's not perfectly accurate, but I haven't drawn it incorrectly, but you can go ahead and draw it in yourself. You can see it kind of trends like that. A breakdown of that level will result in the current weekly short-term uptrend we have been developing to come to an end, guys. 
and that would result in a correction likely back to 40,500 to 41,000. Again, a major area of support. We can see this area's active support in multiple instances. So that is going to be the bearish scenario. If we look at the current area of resistance, where is Bitcoin most likely to experience a reversal that could take Bitcoin to retest this area, this uptrending support line from? You, you guessed it, guys. It is going to be this area of resistance, okay? Resistance is resistance until it is not. This is the trigger point for a continuation upwards to retest 48K. Okay, the 46k level is the trigger point for a continuation to 48k, which is a major macro resistance. Thus, this area between 45.5, the range high of that first initial move, okay, and 46k, the macro high time frame range low of resistance, is going to be a major area of resistance and a trigger point for a continuation. A break through 46,000 will result in a move to 48,000. While this area acts as resistance, it is not expected to break until it does. And therefore, you should not be opposed to taking very, very high risk short-term positions that have very tight invalidations above this level for potential corrections. Or at least, if you have short-term trades that you are at significant profit on, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to take profits or to assess your stop loss and start to move it upwards in the event that we see pullbacks so you have your risk managed, okay? What I'm trying to say to you is a lot of people are starting to flip major bullish at the resistance and when I see resistance, I start to think, okay, it is time to take profits. If it breaks upwards, great. The price continues upwards, spot bags can continue to print. If it corrects, we want to be ahead of that move. So be prepared for it, okay? I think that about sums up the video. I'm not going to get into the technicals too much. We're looking more at the structures right now. Uh, I think, again, if I have to look at the technicals, it would be showing an initial sign of exhaustion developing at resistance, which again is expected. It is expected to see exhaustion develop at resistance. If we do see a short-term correction, we are looking for a retest of this area. So we are looking for a retest of 44,250. Prior resistance becomes support. Prior resistance becomes support. This will be an ideal correction for a continuation upwards. Again, a loss of this level will result in a short-term correction to POC. All these levels are going to be acting as areas of support before I move downwards. So guys, I'll leave it there. I'll also like to say one thing, and that is everything is kind of moving a little quicker than expected. The reason I'm saying this area is an area of resistance and I'm not particularly expecting a break of 48k on the monthly scale, okay, we can break above or on the weekly, on the monthly scale before the halving is because we've never seen a break of that dollar trend line on the monthly scale before the halving event. It happened after the halving event, it happened after the halving event. So we do have to keep that in mind. We generally only see this occur after the halving, which gives us about a 50-ish day window between now and where Bitcoin is expected to break the monthly candle above. That is a two month window. So it is very hard to say for sure if we're going to see that happen or we're going to see uh, the price action move sideways for a lot longer. We have to really play the short term by ear and focus on range trading the short term, okay? Thank you for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Check out the Crypto Academy courses. Link down below. Uh, 10 unit course. You can email us via email on this website if you're interested in getting access to our course over here. We teach you guys absolutely everything you need to understand and know about TA for a fundamental uh, and initial starting foundation. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.